Hey guys, it's Mary, and I'm back with an all new raw review video blog. Uh, sorry for the delay. I had a couple things I had to get done, but um, let's get right to it. Monday Night Raw on Monday, uh, following the fallout of Money in the Bank on Sunday. Um, I'm just gonna do really quick the big things that happen, and then I'm gonna get into something else because there is a lot more stuff going on. Um, Cineverse Styles continues. Uh, AJ Styles pins Cena at Money in the Bank. Uh, it wasn't a clean win, but he's a heel. Um, the referee got knocked out, and Anderson and Gallows came down and interfered in the match, and basically AJ won out of that. They put him on Cena and he won. So it looks like it's going to continue. There's a funny skit between AJ and the club, uh, making them apologize to him, and then making him apologize to Cena. So that looks like that will be continuing forward. Uh, Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens continues. They had a match on Monday. Sami challenged him, ended up in a brawl after Sami won. Uh, Kevin attacked him. It was a brawl that went backstage. He had to get separated. I really, really hope this thing goes forever and ever and ever because it's awesome. Uh, Sasha Banks returned uh, after Paige had a championship match with Charlotte and lost Brooke, Dana Brooke and Charlotte started attacking Paige. Sasha came down for the save and um, it looks like she kind of aligned herself with Paige and held up the title. Uh, so that's probably going to be your match at SummerSlam for the Women's Championship. It's good to see Sasha back. Uh, she's a breath of fresh air. Uh, Natty turned on Money in the Bank on Becky Lynch. I guess she's finally fed up of you know, getting walked all over for the last eight years, and they decided to finally change her gimmick. Um, the Wyatt family returned, Bray Wyatt returned, and the New Day challenged him. I guess they're just doing this because there's three members of them and three members of them, and it's kind of weird, but hopefully they won't have the Wyatt's job out to the New Day. I don't, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, for anybody who's living under a rock, Dean Ambrose won the Money in the Bank briefcase on Sunday, and then during the main event match, uh, Seth Rollins beat Roman Reigns clean. I know. Nobody saw it coming. Everybody was ecstatic. And then Dean Ambrose came out, um, hit Seth from behind with the briefcase and pinned him, and Dean Ambrose is the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I'm super excited about it. Um, it's awesome. It was nothing. It was a surprise. It, you know... Nobody saw it coming, and then Monday Night Raw happened, and Rollins said he deserved a rematch, and Reigns said he deserved a rematch, they were going back and forth, technically Rollins should get it because he pinned him, and Shane came out and said they were going to have a match that night to determine the number one contender, ended up, up at a double count out, uh, so he booked a triple threat for Battleground for the heavyweight title. On Tuesday, news broke that Roman Reigns uh, violated the wellness policy for WWE and he's been suspended for 30 days starting, I guess, then. Um, he peed dirty. What he peed dirty for, we don't know. I mean, he doesn't look like a drug addict, so, you know, make your own assumptions. Um, the funny thing about this is, is now rumors are coming out that the WWE knew about this before Money in the Bank. So, is this why he dropped the title? And they still continued to book him in a championship match at Battleground because his suspension is up right after the draft, but before uh, the next pay-per-view, which is Battleground. So, is this damage control? I mean, is the Roman Reigns agenda that hardcore that they're ignoring this? Like, people get suspended for stupid things, and, you know... The guy who's been giving the kings to the kingdom just got a dirty piss test. And I think it's really, really bad that if they knew about this, they still put him in the triple threat. I mean, it's not fair. Like, granted, they had him drop the belt at Money in the Bank, and that's the move that they should have done. But he's going to be written off TV next week, apparently. He's going to be on Monday Night Raw. They're not just going to pull him. So how, how much of, is he being punished? I don't know. I mean, I find it ironic. I think it sucks to an extent, but this is, you know, karma. You know, pushing an agenda and then ignoring your policies that, you know, you're supposed to be implementing for everybody, and he's supposed to be the face now, or they're trying to make him the new face, and he's supposed to set an example. So, 
We will see. I don't know how this is going to affect him on the draft. Is he still going to get drafted? Of course he's still going to get drafted. I mean, he was supposed to be the main guy on, on Raw, and I don't know if that's going to happen now. We will see. Um, the only other big thing that I want to talk about is there's all these rumors of people being contacted uh, for the draft coming up on July 19th. They announced that the SmackDown, the first SmackDown that's live, is when the draft will happen uh, for the brand extension, the brand split. Uh, it's going to be general managers picking people. John Laurinaitis was back this week, continuing with the old GM thing. I hate him. Anyway, so they're going to be handpicking people. It's not going to be the lottery draft like they, they've done in the, in the past. Um, so there's rumors that uh, Carlito's been contacted, Chantal Benjamin's been contacted, RVD's been contacted, and now there's rumors that Kurt Angle has been contacted. I'm going to mark out for a second because Kurt Angle is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I know he shouldn't be wrestling anymore. I still think he should get one or two big matches to retire one last WrestleMania match. My dream match of Daniel Bryan versus Kurt Angle will never happen because both of them are really, really messed up and Kurt just continues to, you know. I get that he shouldn't really be wrestling and the WWE doesn't want to take him as a risk. But if you don't bring Kurt Angle back as a manager and put him with American Alpha when they come up to the main roster, which I think will happen during the draft. I think that NXT is going to be involved in this draft and it's going to get rated and they're going to be one of the teams coming up making their debut. You're leaving money on the table, as they like to say in the business. Dude, just do it. It, it writes itself. You don't even have to do anything. They are the second coming of the world's greatest tag team and Kurt Angle is a personality. He's not just a wrestler. He was amazing when he was there. The stuff with Steve Austin is classic. The stuff with John Cena was classic. The stuff with Stephanie was even classic. And I think it would be really good to start getting managers back into things and to have the old guard come back and put over the new school. You know what I mean? So that's my rant. Kurt Angle from Monday Night Raw during the draft. I'm behind you, Kurt. And he did an interview and he said it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So. Let it be known that when Kurt Angle appears on my TV finally, after the last three years of trying to, you know, make a market campaign for it, I will be marking the hell out because I love Kurt Angle. I hope he sees this. Hi, Kurt. All right. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Mayor underscore Bear. Follow Busted Open at Busted Open Radio. Uh, like my YouTube page, Mary Greater. Um, have a nice weekend. Fourth of July is coming up. A lot of graduations. My nephew just graduated in grade. My other nephew's graduating high school today. I, I can't even deal, guys. I can't. I'm getting super old. And um, have a great week. I will see you next week at some point when I get the time to do this thing. Wait.